Hi there, I'm Isair and I think I am the first Let's Player on YouTube who would like to v welcome you to this particular game published by Virgin in Interactive, made by R Rowan Overlord! Made back in 1994 The year of a lord! <laughs> 1994, my goodness it's been almost 20 years uh, this is a World War II flight simulator, actually, and uh, I should probably just warn you right away that uh, I'm terrible, absolutely awful at uh, flight simulators. I don't even drive a car, much less uh, <laughs> know how to make a, an airplane take off and land. Uh, but Back in 1994, I did actually play this game quite a lot. Uh, its graphics, obviously, 20 years later, don't look like very much. But uh, back in the day, this was fairly groundbreaking. You had a resolution of 640 by 400p, and that was quite a lot back then, actually. Uh, most games back then were 320 by 200 only. So let's just hit scramble and I'll show you what it looks like uh, inside the cockpit. Um, you've got a bunch of instruments here. Um, if I increase the revs more rounds per minute I'll go faster. I think I'll rather slow down actually. I can start diving and you see there's a climb, descend meter and left, right, back and all sorts of things. Uh, the things that are f shooting at, man at me now I think are boats, ships. Those are my targets actually, so let's uh, shoot back a little bit. My goodness, they... Well, that was my first torpedo boat. Not flying very far above them. Actually, I'm pretty fa badly hurt right now by the, that machine gun firing. I can only get a little bit less than 30 rounds per minute, actually, uh, rather than 50. Um, like I said, I'm not particularly good at this game. Um, before I get shot down, I should at least. Um, give you an outside view of my current aircraft, which is a Typhoon. And let's just look around a bit. There are some enemy planes over there somewhere. And you can see this, this sea, and the green is, is land. I guess you guessed that. Uh, if you think I'm surprisingly good at, uh, or my aircraft is surprisingly uh, agile, then you'd be right. Uh, well, I'll talk more about that later. I'm just going to try and see if I can get this last torpedo boat. Come on! Oh, I did say I couldn't aim, didn't I? I aim like a blindfolded mole. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is my aircraft as seen from the outside, and, uh, well, it's not amazing graphics exactly. You can see over here there's a bit of a harbour and some, some buildings. I should probably switch to rockets and try and hit some of them. Keep the jerrys from, uh... Using them to ship goods. Whoa, okay. Ow, ow, ow. I'm actually smoking. I think it's time to get out of here. Um, I think I'm also. I also think it's uh, time to uh, show you just because this game, as you can see right now, it's 640 by 480. Um, but you could also play it in 300, 320 by 200 resolution. So I think I'll just stop for a bit and show you well how 
what that looks like. So here's how the game looks in just 320 by 200. Um, substantially less clear, I should say, especially look at the... You can't even have, you know, non-capital letters or they won't be readable. If I hit scramble, same thing, but in much lower resolution and, um... Um, at the time, back in 1994, this was, I definitely remember that this was all the resolution I could manage uh, in the air. My machine could not manage uh, 640 by 400 in the air back then. I could get that on the ground, perhaps. But not, not in the air. I would just, it would lag like crazy, of course. And, um, like, like I said back in the day, 640 by 400 was pretty groundbreaking. It was, uh, you had to mess around with particular graphics drivers and stuff just to get 640 by, by 400. And, and I could get it, my screen could handle it, but. You know, like modern games with good graphics, the takes more CPU to be able to handle it. So there was lag, essentially. Now it plays much the same, of course, in this kind of resolution. In fact, even on the DOSBox, I'm running DOSBox with some pretty insane ratings now. Actually, I'm still this is actually a heck of a lot smoother than it was in 640 by 400. Um. But I mean, in this co this resolution, if enemy aircraft, if you can see enemy aircraft is any more than just a kind of uh, black or sort of blotch basically on the screen, then you're probably, if you can see it as more than that, you're probably cl too close to it and about to crash into it actually. Pretty much the same as me and, and those buildings right there. <clears throat> oh, right. Um, switch to outside view again where I can see my ground target, which basically is this sort of dock, docks area. Uh, you may have noticed, or probably haven't noticed, but bottom right. You see, you see it says gun and rocket, and I switch to gun, and it'll do this, I switch to rocket, it'll do this. You can also see that I can sort of keep shooting, basically, because um, this is very, very early in the game, and I'm on a very low difficulty, so I have in actually um, unlimited ammo now, uh, which is really, really helpful, seeing as I can't aim worth it out. Anyway, I do have a wingman somewhere, don't I? Yeah, it's supposed to be over there. But, oh, let's try and get out of that anti-aircraft fire, shall we? Old buddy ho. Yeah. I think that's enough of 320 by 200, but just to show you what things... This was sort of the, the normal expected graphics at the time that this game was released. Alright, so, um, we've seen uh, what basically the game sort of normally looks like. Um, I think I want to skip a few frames actually to try and get it to play a little bit smoother actually. I think it's time now to get into the sort of background here. I think it's actually sort of time to start properly with um, a new game maybe. And if I do that I'll be returned to this uh, overview of an airfield 
where new pilots should report to the ops room for a welcome brief. Alternatively, if you're ready for immediate action, report to the tower. An aircraft already on the flight line. So let's head to the ops room. Let's see. Um, gotta hover my mouse over it till I find it. I think it's somewhere over. That's the CO's office. Uh, that's the ops room. And you've got a bit of a an officer there saying, Welcome to Tangmere Station, the home of three squadrons of the Allied Expeditionary Air Force. We have squadrons of Spitfires, Typhoons, and Mustangs. This briefing is split up into a number of elements. Choose to view any, all, or none. All material is available for review later. You will find that the material will be updated during the campaign, and so it is worth re-examining. So let's get the briefing on what this is all about, shall we? Because the game is called Overlord, but uh, it's certainly not D-Day just yet. I think it's time to get the background here. After Dunkirk, Winston Churchill said to the French, We shall be back. After many years of disappointment and delay, 1944 is the, to be the year the Allies return to France. The directive issued to the General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander, is straightforward. You will enter the continent of Europe and, in conjunction with other Allied nations, undertake operations aimed at the heart of Germany and the destruction of her armed forces. The invasion date is set for early June. Beforehand, the ground must be thoroughly prepared, and that is the job of the Allied Expeditionary, Expeditionary Air Force, or AEAF. And basically that's who we're playing as part of. So three categories of targets have been defined. Each category must be controlled before the invasion can be given a chance of success. First of all, the Luftwaffe must be forced out of the area. This should be achieved by attacks on airfields as well as engaging enemy aircraft at every opportunity. The transport plan has been devised to also interfere with the enemy's ability to move men and materials into the battle area. This calls for attacks on bridges, marshalling yards, trains and rolling stock. And finally, we must attack the enemy's defences. These include coast coastal batteries, radar sites and build-up of army equipment. The current status of the target can always be inspected by asking for campaign status when in the briefing room. So there it is! Our job is to prepare the ground for invasion. Good luck. And that's what the game Overlord is about. It's, um... Perhaps I should have said straight away, it really mustn't be confused with so many other games with a similar name. This is called Overlord because it is focused on the Allied invasion of Normandy, but the entire game is sort of a preparation for that. It's about preparing the ground for the Allied invasion to make sure that it will actually succeed in the end. Now let's also get a little bit of briefing on the aircraft available here, because uh, we've got the Spitfires, um, which looks beautiful and sounds powerful, is a good example of this saying, if it looks right, it'll be right. It was a powerful factor in the Battle of Britain, and is still a useful weapon, apparently. There's now, we're flying the Mark IX Spitfire in 1944. Uh, it, the Spit doesn't have... It has, a, it has very limited fuel capacity, so it can't be used for escort duties over Germany, and therefore it's used under Normandy, closer to Britain. The main role for the Spitfire is medium bomber escort, but since we have so many Spits, the aircraft has been pushed into less suitable roles, like dive bombing, which makes the Spit vulnerable. And you really shouldn't stay at low altitudes for long, because the Spitfire can't take an awful lot of punishment. Uh, on the other hand, there is also the Typhoon that you saw before, which apparently is a brute, difficult to handle on takeoff and landing, and it is unforgiving in the air and has technical problems, but it's a formidable weapon in the right hands. Uh, it's good at low altitudes, supposedly, better turn rate than the German Focke Wolf 190, and the main thing is it's a fighter bomber and it's got 60 pound high explosive rockets that you can use to pound the ground with. There's apparently a problem with the ventilation so you should keep your oxygen mask on while flying.
So in the next video I'm going to choose which aircraft to use actually. Until then.